And just like that, we're back again. Uncle Bokow in the building. Today we have a classic. That's right. This is Melinda's uh, Habanero Garlic Classic sauce, Pepper Sauce. Listen, guys. I've never done a review on this. And I haven't had this sauce in years. But at one point, this was one of Uncle Bokow's favorite sauces. Let's read the ingredient sauce. I also got a beautiful habanero to have on my breakfast. Yeah. So let's um let's let's turn the lightsaber on and see what the uh what the 411 is on this. All right, ingredients. Habanero pepper mash, which is water and habanero pepper. No salt. Salt comes later, but usually the mash, I wouldn't see it listed as a mash if it's just a puree. Uh, so we got the habanero pepper mash. We got carrots is the next ingredient. Then onion, vinegar, lime juice, garlic, salt, uh, citric acid, and xanthan gum. Usually you don't, you usually need citric acid if you got vinegar, but you see the water part in the mash. That's probably why they had the citric acid. Um, so yeah, Melinda's garlic. Back in the days before, you know, I, I didn't know any craft sauce makers, and um, this was pr pretty much th this was the standard back in the, in the in the '90s. A lot of people can tell you that. I don't have a tasting spoon, so all right, smells good. Let's see what what kind of mischief we can get into today. Now it's been years since I've had this sauce. I don't know how many, uh, a, lo a long time, way before this channel started. All right, so there's the poor Uncle Bokow. That yolky egg, let's go in with a little more sauce. We want to really taste it. Mild. You can taste the habanero in there. Um, pretty balanced sauce. The garlic, yeah, you get garlic. It's not overly uh, garlicky, you know. It's not, not like that. Let's we, we let's do a solo sip. There's a little bit of heat, yeah. The lime juice and the citric acid give it a nice little citrus kick. Overall, a good sauce. Um, I know that the store that I used to get this from, I used to buy this back in the 90s. Um, and sometime throughout, I don't know, sometime after that, the store, the only store that carried it in the, the city I was in, they jacked the price way up. And I always like the Melinda's original and this one. Um, but the store that I got it from, Jack the Price Up, I don't remember how much, but I think they started charging like eight bucks a bottle. Now, back then, that was a lot of money for a bottle of hot sauce. Um, it just was for a bottle of store bought hot sauce, okay? Now, if I went down to the um, the mall, um, and went, or to, I, I went to either Albany or Syracuse, New York. There was hot sauce stores that had stuff from smaller companies. You know, eight bucks wasn't a bad price you know, to pay for a hot sauce that was unique, you know, uh, small batch, handcrafted. But this kind of stuff, you know, it's commercial stuff. You were like, man, I don't, I don't want to pay eight bucks. I mean, I go through a half a bottle. In one sitting, so let's try.
try some of this beautiful habanero pepper with the sauce because you guys know that's what I really, really, really love to do is uh, let's have the, the pepper sauce with the pepper to make a very, very distinct and unique flavor. I can't really figure out how to grab this thing. It's a piece of toast with some with a hash brown and an egg on it. All right, cover it like so. And then throw the slices of habanero up there. Yes. Let's see if this improves it. Money. That's money right there. Wow. So a few years back, um, I used to buy the Woodstock, which were Tropical Pepper Company back then, um, habanero scotch bonnet sauces. And I would just grab some fresh habaneros uh, from the produce section of the store. I would come home. And I would puree up the fresh habaneros with that sauce. Why? That sauce had a lot of citric acid and it was very salty. Okay. Didn't have enough heat. And I wanted more habanero flavor. So I put the fresh habaneros in with that. And I literally ate that for like a year. Like on my breakfast every morning. Mmm. So that may be how I got used to, uh, you know, the fresh flavor with the the acidified flavor, you know, the hot sauce. Um, overall, it's a good sauce. I I did try. I don't know if I've reviewed or not. This one I never had back in the nineties with a triple X hot Melinda's, but I did try this. In 2021, after I was eating like fermented sauces and craft sauces for a while, and I didn't think it was that great at all. Um, so I'm going to give it another shot and uh, see how I like it. But this and the Melinda's original are excellent. Uh, a lot of you guys know about the, the stories about Marie Sharps versus Melinda's and... Uh, I think overall both of them are good companies. Good, you know, the sauces are pretty good. Um, I think I prefer Marie Sharp's a little bit over this, but they're both similar. They're habanero carrot sauces, and um, which I absolutely love. Um, I've had some carrot sauces that are a little bit too heavy on the carrot. You know what I mean? I'll be honest with you, but let's let's do this. Let's do a gusher. Melinda's habanero on habanero gusher. Let's go. Mmm. That was refreshing. Um. So overall, good sauce. Absolutely love habanero sauces. Now, what I don't like is I don't know. If, I think they're in, they got thrown out. These little bottles that they're in like a gift pack or something. I what I don't like is those sauces that say habanero that come in the like cheap Christmas gift pack. Woo, that's got good burn to it. Um, I don't like those habanero sauces because. They are usually a cayenne sauce that has a little bit of habanero in it. And it doesn't really do much. It kind of just 
doesn't shine through the flavor of the habanero. I don't like them at all. And I think it even covers up the, the, the flavor of the cayenne a little bit. So it's, they're really no use to me. Um, you know, those thin, like Texas Pete style sauces that are, that say habanero on them. So if, if you're talking about those, I don't want no parts of them. A nice, good, thick, you know, habanero sauce like this. Um, it's thick and chunky and, you know, it's got some body to it. Uh, nice garlic and whatnot. This is what I like. And I use habanero in some of my sauces. My blazing bonnet is first scotch bonnet. But there's also habanero in there. Um, and so, uh, the Mad Mash, that was the original recipe, you know, was yellow naga and, um, habanero and some other peppers in there. Um, now we use habanero, uh, mixed with a, a fatality yellow reaper. So we put those two together and I just absolutely love uh, I love habanero sauces and scotch bonnet sauces. If you'd say, what's your two favorite sauces? It's those. It's those. Hands down all day long. They just pack such a good flavor. A habanero sauce, though, if you're using uh, imported habaneros that aren't fresh, habaneros, they lose their essence. Just like any other, um, even anything in the Chidens, especially. Uh, so, you know, it's... It's got to be good. I think Marie Sharps is really good about um, you know, retaining the flavor of the peppers. Um, Melinda's, I can say this, back in the day, I think it was better. I think something changed over the years, in the past 20, 25 years. Uh, to me, it just doesn't taste exactly the same. It's still good, though. But to me, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. And it could be, like I said, they had their own small farms that were, you know, were, all their habaneros were coming in fresh. And uh, maybe they're having to outsource things now and have things shipped to them in bulk. So th that kind of stuff happens. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, overall a good sauce. I bought this on sale. It was like two, three bucks. So for that, it's well worth it. Uncle Bullcuffer loves you. Wow.